welcome everybody. Um, let's uh, let's get rolling here. So Vanessa, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us for um, a few minutes or so. Um, and now you are live in in Malibu, or am I close to there? Are you, are you close um, to actually, I live in the Hollywood Hills, which is about forty minutes from Malibu. But I go there a lot, as you can see from my yeah. Instagram page. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, welcome. We're 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 so thrilled to have you here. And for those Thank of you, you who are joining us right now, um, yes, uh, this is her real name, Vanessa Angel. <laughs> I, I imagine that you. I mean, read, imagine you'd be filthy rich if uh, you got a hundred dollars for every time somebody asked you if that was your real name, correct? That is that is for sure. I actually, when I first started in the business, I almost changed my name because I I had so many, uh, everybody would say, is that your real name? Is that your real name? And it really is my birth name. Um, and I just thought it, it was gonna, it was sort of gonna haunt me for the rest of my career. But I'm actually glad that I didn't change it because it is my family name. And it's just, it just has a certain connotation that I think uh, kind of uh, <laughs> makes people question if I made it up or not. So. And bo born in London originally, correct? Yes, I was born in northwest London, actually, which is sort of a, a suburb, a suburb of London called Harrow, and uh, and then I moved to New York when I was sixteen. And I actually had started modeling right before that, so I had spent some time in Paris and Milan, and then I ended up making my way to New York, and I uh, lived in Manhattan for almost ten years, and then I got the show Weird Science, and I moved to California for that. To gotcha, LA. and then and then yeah. ever since. And yes, you did you did start as a model, and then we're lucky to grab that role as the Russian spy in Spies Like Us with Dan Aykroyd and Chevy Chase. And I know from there, yes. your modeling career, uh, not modeling career, but acting career then really kind of took off. I mean, did you always know that acting was something that you wanted to do? Um, well, I had always done school plays and, I, and I, I loved it as a kid. And even with my sister and like kids in the neighborhood, we would put on like silly, goofy plays when I was little, but it, it was never something that I thought that I would do as a profession. And then the role in Spies Like Us kind of kind of landed in my lap, to be honest. And uh, it, it really opened a lot of doors because it was a big movie with Warner Brothers and I got a, a really good agent from, from doing that. And uh, so that kind of opened the doors and, and I, I feel like it was kind of meant to be. So I, I went down that path and, and I'm very happy that I did. That's fantastic. Um, so let's talk Kingpin. I mean, you know, here we are okay. it's almost 25 years later, but you can believe it. I um, know. 20, yeah, I mean, 24 years. 24 yeah, years. Yeah. yeah, who knows? Maybe <laughs> I feel they'll really do. Old. I wonder if they'll do maybe an anniversary thing next year or something. But, um, you know, yeah. all these many years later, I mean, it's definitely still, you know, it's it still has its charm as a, as a real kind of bowling cult classic film. I mean, are you, are you pleasantly surprised that it still still has this longevity to it? Yeah. I mean, I think I actually just did this uh, this cult movie documentary I, that they did a little section on Kingpin so it was included in, in cult classics and I don't think anybody realized that at the time of, of, of filming actually it's like it was only the Farrelly Brothers second movie after right. Dumb and Dumber so you know, you know they were they were still not that well known although Dumb and Dumber had done really well and you just you know you don't you you never really know how something's going to come together. And then, of course, when it came out, it, it actually, in the theaters, it didn't really do that well. It was, it was the same weekend as the Atlanta bombing for the Olympics. And there was a lot of things that sort of just didn't come into play to, to make it be a, a, a big box office hit. And, and it, really, it really matters how that opening weekend does. So I think everybody was very disappointed when it first came out. And then, and then six months later, it, it got... It got kind of rediscovered on on video, and then when there's something about Mary came out, you know, a couple of years later, I think people loved that movie, and that really took off. And then people sort of looked at what the Frawley brothers had done before, and they discovered Kingpin that way too. So yeah, I know it's really surprising. I mean, there's barely a day that goes by that I don't get some kind of uh, some kind of uh, comment about kingpin so it, it's 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 lovely i mean and i think it, it's you know it, it really does hold up it's it's very funny and I, I feel very blessed to be part of it yeah well we're glad you were and um you know for those of you just joining us or perhaps not familiar with what's happening today our team with roswell park cessation services as as robin mentioned 
Um, we're, we're small but mighty and we've uh, for a couple of years now raised funds for the Ride for Roswell, which is the major fundraiser event um, for Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center in Buffalo. Um, in fact, Vanessa, I'm not sure if you know this, but it's Ride for Roswell is actually the largest bicycle race fundraiser in the nation. So uh, oh, last, wow. yeah, last year it raised $5 million. So uh, oh, it's, that's pretty, amazing. it's pretty huge. It, it, all the funds go towards uh, cancer research, cancer treatment. And this year, of course, things are very different. The ride should have happened about a month ago. And of course, COVID-19 putting everything all up in the air. Everything, but, right? Yeah, but yeah. That next month throughout August, there's going to be sort of mini rides throughout the month. Um, physically distanced, mm -hmm. of course, but mm -hmm. we, as as a group, we did a very successful bowling fundraiser last year. We were set to do it again, and That's of course, great. everything blew up. So um, Pat, who is at the controls right now for the chat, um, it was her mm -hmm. kind of brainchild to say, well, maybe we can get some speakers on, have some fun. Um, in fact, for everybody here next week, Lorenzo Alexander, Pro Bowl uh, linebacker who just retired from the Bills, will be on this time next week. Um, but uh, she was saying, you know, who can we get? And I, I kid you not, Vanessa, I'm, I'm, I was like literally at my phone 10 minutes before that meeting and, and looking at one of the, the great photos and messages on Instagram. And I don't know what happened, but the two and two went together and I thought, mm, pin bowling yeah. and here we are. So it's perfect. That, you know, it's perfect. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so that's kind of the loose, the loose tie, everybody. But um, but I got to say, getting back to the movie, which I just rewatched last night, and it was even more fun than, than I remember. Yeah. And um, <laughs> you know, I've been wanting to ask that the, the famous fight scene with Woody Harrelson, uh, did you get the opportunity yes. to kick him where the sun don't shine, or uh, did the stunt doubles have all the fun? <laughs> I, I wish. <laughs> yeah, there was a stunt double. <laughs> yeah, we... We actually shot that it was Pittsburgh and it was November and it was so cold so that like the sort of the, the breath that's coming out of my mouth is like because it was freezing and uh, you know the a stunt double did do the the, the really sort of serious I mean I, I did the, the, the basic stuff but yeah the, the, the throws and the flips and stuff it was a stunt double I mean you're not really allowed to do the stunts even if you were like wanting to do them like because of insurance and stuff like that so Sure, sure. So, I mean, I think like Tom Cruise has done some uh, some of his own stunts, but like usually that they don't even want actors to do that stuff. Not that the, not that the Kingpin fight scene was like that that you know dangerous, but but yeah, no, it's a funny scene. I remember when they they um, you know that that when he punches me and 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 they had this mechanical like breast thing and and <laughs> and that wasn't in the script. And so when the Farley brothers said, "Oh, we're gonna do this thing," and and I was like, really? That's, that sounds really strange. But it worked. It worked. It, it, was, it was pretty funny. It worked. It was hysterical. So, in fact, um, real quick, folks, I'm just going to share a 20-second, not a clip from the movie, but something else that perhaps you folks haven't seen. So check this out. So we'll play this quick. Here is <laughs> Vanessa Bowling. <laughs> so as you can see from that, um, I mean, it right. certainly looks like uh, like you're quite the bowler yourself. So just wondering, I mean, do you uh, do you enjoy bowling? And um, and you know, if so I mean, if you've gone before, like what's what's the best you've ever bowled? Oh God, I I couldn't even tell you. I mean, that was like a fluke. <laughs> I mean, I, I have been bowling a few times. But <laughs> I know, right? Luckily, it was caught on camera. Um, yeah, and I don't even know how to score bowling. It's like, because um, actually, when when we, when we were shooting Kingpin, um, obviously we were in a lot of bowling alleys, and um, and all the crew all like actually bowled, and you know between takes and stuff, because it's a setup between scenes and stuff, you know, technical setup, and uh, and I didn't really participate that much, and uh, but I've been, you know, I've been bowling several times, and it's really fun. I absolutely love it. But like a strike for me is is a rare event, so <laughs> that was kind of a fluke that that little video. Well, hey, you know, it's, yeah. sorry to disappoint is, you. Sorry to disappoint you. It, hey, you know what though? Um, <laughs> you got the video, and that's that's important. <laughs> I yeah, a, exactly. It's like it's like a miracle that that like uh, that 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 when it was being filmed, that actually I actually got a strike. I actually read a fun fact the uh, just the other day about Kingpin that people were actually mm -hmm. cheering for Brill Murray so loudly during his final scenes because he actually was bowling strikes. So yeah. that's, that's yeah. crazy. 
Yeah, no, I think and Randy was a very good bowler, and I think Woody Woody wasn't as good, but he got better during the course of the filming. But <laughs> but yeah, and I think Peter 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 actually talks about Peter Farrelly actually talks about this in the uh, cult movie thing that the uh, interview that we did. And uh, he says that he like got by the end of the, the movie, he got like, I forget the score, but like he got really good. He got really good because it really, I mean, we, we, we uh, shot in a lot of different bowling alleys across uh, Pennsylvania, so. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. We do have some, some questions coming in. We will try if we've got time at the end to, okay. go, to, a, to go to a few. Um, but sure. you know, in the meantime, just to kind of keep rolling here and uh, yeah, yeah and, and thanks for the bowling banter. I mean, it's definitely, you know, it's a huge part of our social social culture here in Western New York. We're we're missing it, um, and of course, the yeah. the event would have been what we would have done had Ride for Oswald well gone on and life in general gone on as it was supposed to. But here we are, yeah, we're raising yeah. raising funds for Ride for Oswald, and you know, again, uh, everybody who's joining us right now, even, even afterwards, check the link to donate. We're also doing, we're allowing for all of these speaker series to um, allow our speakers to pick a charity to co-promote as well. So, um, uh, Vanessa, you have chosen Life Rolls On, which is an organization mm. dedicated to helping those with disabilities, especially with um, providing adaptive skating, adaptive surfing. Tell yeah. us a little bit about, um, about that charity and why you selected it. Well, I met I met the guy who uh, created the charity. His name is Jesse Billauer, and he was actually a uh, you know world class surfer. And he got, had an accident, a tragic accident, and he's now paraplegic. And so he started this this charity to help people who with disabilities to actually surf and to, to skateboard and be very you know try and be as active as possible. And I spend a lot of time at the beach and I have a lot of surfer friends and a lot of you know not not so many skateboarder friends, but I, I just you know uh, sports and 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 act you know physical activity is very important to me. So and he's a wonderful guy and I just I don't know I just uh, and they do a lot of events in on the beach in Santa Monica and in Malibu and he actually grew up in Malibu. So I just feel a connection. I felt a connection to, to him and to that organization. And unfortunately, they can't really do any events right now because of what's happening. So, yeah. yeah. So, it's yeah, it's, it's hard. hard well, I, I, I will say that I did give him the heads up that we were doing this. And he actually got back yeah. to me immediately and is very grateful. Oh, good. So, um, yeah, I personally, I'll be making guy. a donation after this call and encourage others to as well. So um, that's fantastic. Thank you. Yes, I, I would not have known that they existed uh, without this. I mean, I guess, yeah. I guess there you go, the whole West and East Coast uh, <laughs> disconnects. Yeah. You don't know what's happening on the other side of the country, right? So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, surfing is a very California, Southern California thing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so I have you, and um, the reason why I, I grew up becoming such a fan really was the show uh, Weird Science. I mean, I, I guess you could say I was the demographic for that show. It was, the, you know, mid nineties, yeah. I was a teen, you played a genie to, yeah. to, you know, the two boys who were, you know, supposedly in, in high school, but um, yeah. I, always thought it, I always thought it was interesting because, you know, looking up them afterwards, it looks like at the time of the filming, they were both in their early twenties. So I was just always curious they to know if you, ever, if you guys ever joked about that, if you felt the disconnect, or if it's just, hey, acting's acting, you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, th I, I think, you know, I mean, they, they look younger, that they looked younger than their 20 something years, but, but um, they actually, it, it, it's hard, they, ha they usually, when, when uh, there's a character that's a teenager, there's more restrictions if you actually use a 15 year old or a 16 year old in terms of like their hours they're allowed to work and the, the rules on their screen oh, right, skill. Right. So they, they tend to always uh, cast uh kids that are a little bit older that can look younger because otherwise you just have too many restrictions so that's yeah but they 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 both had baby faces so <laughs> i think they passed as 15 but yeah they were actually in their early 20s it it, de it definitely worked so <laughs> and yeah. i gotta say the, the show just you know going through all the episodes that i, I can think of i mean it was just it, if one word captures it, it, it it's fun and yeah. I'm kind of wondering, you know, from for all the many episodes that, that well, you filmed all of them, um, you know, is there any yeah. one, you know, that kind of jumps to mind if you think about it right away that perhaps comes off as maybe the most fun you had um, acting in or maybe just something memorable? Curious to know. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, every, every episode was so fun because, as you said, it's like each 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 episode was like a, a little mini adventure. But I think obviously the ones that I was more heavily in, uh, like Teen Lisa, uh, the Genie Detective, I had I had fun, and, and Taylor to Lisas. The ones where it was more story revolved around Lisa, obviously, were, were, was more fun for me. But I think my favorite episode of the whole show is a weird one, the, the sci-fi zoned, which is in black and white, and I don't remember that one. But no, uh, that, man, I wasn't even in that one that much, but I, I just found that to be just really interesting and, and different. And, but I mean, I had fun doing every episode, but yeah, I would say probably Teen Lisa was really fun because I got to play sort of a, a, a goofy, teenager and I and I mean each episode I really got to play like a slightly different version of Lisa you know sometimes it was the teacher and I mean I was different characters within Lisa so it was always always a little bit of a challenge and always fun yeah, yeah. great yeah and I, I thought I had heard at the end of last year that there was a possible reboot in the works for this show but I'm thinking yes. maybe COVID-19 <laughs> maybe derailed is still yeah, any thoughts COVID-19 on that? Is yeah, I mean, I hope I hope it happens. We're not sure yet. I mean, COVID nineteen has has derailed the whole industry right now, so I it, it's very, very up in the air what's happening. I don't really know how they're. I actually I, I was in the middle of shooting two things when, when the pandemic started, and we had to shut down, and then I resumed in early June, uh, and it was just very strange. One one of them, all the scenes were outside, and and so we could do the social distancing very easily. But it's really hard to, to shoot anything, you know, where you need to be close to the camera or another actor or it, it's, I'm not sure how they're going to uh, figure out how to resume production, really. So it's, it's, you know, I think everyone in my industry is a little bit concerned right now as to how things are going to be able to move forward. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a whole new world, that's, that's for sure. Um, before we move on to a, a couple other prepared questions we had here, um, I just I want to bring in Pat Bax, at least just through audio. Um, and I just got a note saying there's, there's a lot of questions that have popped in. So, Pat, if you would, uh, maybe choose a question here and read it to the group. And we'll, we'll have uh, Vanessa try to answer. Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you, Vanessa, for this very interesting interview so far. And I'm sure I speak on behalf of everyone. One of the questions I think that you just kind of coincidentally answered is, what do you think the impact of COVID-19 has been on the entertainment industry and maybe because here in new york not necessarily in the buffalo area but in new york city we mm -hmm. certainly went through a crisis period and now it sounds like maybe california and some of the other states are experiencing what new york city did maybe you could talk a little bit more about what it's like in california where you are with covid 19. Hmm. well i'm in los Angeles and and uh, everyone is is very I mean I don't I don't you don't really notice that much I mean I don't know what the actual statistics on the spike uh, COVID spike is here I mean I, I have heard that it's like you know really bad in California but in in LA everybody wears masks there's a lot of social distancing there's a lot of uh, commitment to to uh, to that so but I think in some of the other areas in California maybe not so much so I don't, I don't really know. It's a, it's all a bit, a bit strange. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of the industry, it's definitely uh, put a halt to pretty much everything. And I think that uh, all the unions are trying to figure out how to resume work because a lot of the network TV shows usually start up again at this time of year, actually. And uh, yeah, I mean, then there's sort of rules with two week, two week uh, quarantine rules so if you're doing like i tend to do a lot of smaller productions now and it's going to be quite difficult i think because they don't really have the budgets to be able to sort of shut down for two weeks especially if you're on location so i think that there's just a lot of figuring out has to be done in terms of how it's going to resume before there's a, a vaccine so i think you know i obviously have a lot of friends in the industry and i think everyone's a little bit worried but hopefully, hopefully it'll it'll be figured out at some point. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely, I mean, LA is is a little bit isolated. I, I really don't know what's what's happening in terms of outside LA County. But yeah, I mean, everybody's very is very much, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, complying by the by the by the the rules of social distancing and mask wearing here. So. Mm. 
Great. Well, thank you, Vanessa. And it's uh, funny. My next question was actually going to be about that. So we don't we don't yeah. even need to don't even need to broach broach that topic again. Hopefully, we can get to maybe one or two other um, chat questions. I know that you're um, you have limited time. And again, we thank you so much for 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 joining us here. Um, one thing I want to say for for those of you who don't follow Vanessa and whether it's Instagram or, or Facebook, um, you will see just some of the most beautiful photos, both in terms of, of course, her, but the just really the backdrops itself. I mean, I have seen everything from obviously plenty of beach photos to the Joshua tree. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's just the, the colors, the calmness, um, you know, everything uh, that comes through it always just looks very beautiful, tranquil, which is, which is very much Thank welcome you. in a time like this. And I'm wondering in particular, I mean, seeing that you do so much with both outdoors as well as yoga. I mean, do you find that those two things really kind of help keep you centered? Oh, definitely. I've been doing yoga since I was, uh, uh, when I, since 92. Actually, David Duchovny, who was an old friend of mine, he introduced me to yoga. And I was always into fitness, just, you know, from a vanity standpoint. But um, but when I got into yoga, I mean, yeah, I mean, yoga and meditation and mindfulness is, is very important, especially, obviously, it's, it's very useful right now when, with times being so stressful um but yeah i mean actually I, I know i have a lot of a lot of sort of bikini beach heavy uh photos during the summer and it's mostly just because uh you know i i right now i'm just sort of hiking and uh and going to the beach and uh because you know it's quite it's quite easy to to, to be at a, a a distance from people in those scenarios and I, and usually, honestly, I'm just, I, I, none of them are ever like choreographed. It's just like a snapshot, really. Um, and I, I'm usually with my friend, we set up Ander, and we, we actually started a, uh, a, a kind of, we, we wanted to try and get a travel show off the ground. And we, we kind of started by accident. She's, she's one of my oldest friends, and she was on Stargate. We met on, on the show Stargate together. And uh, we started this sort of Mew and V's Excellence Adventures, and so we would, that's why we went to the Joshua Tree and to Zion and to Antelope Valley and to uh, Horseshoe Bend. So we, we, before COVID, we did quite a bit of traveling together. So we would always do pictures in, in, those, uh, in those locations. But I don't like have a photographer. I think people think I have like a photographer that like follows me around, but, but they're literally just like snapshots on my camera roll that I, yeah that I sometimes filter, so that's why they look maybe a little <laughs> bit like prettier than just a, a regular shot. But, but yeah, so it's not, they're not like particularly thought out. It's just sort of wherever I am at that particular time and take a quick photo and hope for the rest. Well, Musetta does does a, a great job. So, uh, you know, whatever, you, <laughs> whatever you're paying or double it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> let's um let's really quickly if you still got a couple minutes Vanessa um, yeah sure I'm, yeah. I'm being told a couple other good questions came in through the chat so I'm going to go ahead and unmute chat again to chime in and, and we'll we'll have our select one I'm uh you know unable to really kind of multitask <laughs> and see what's coming in by that but I I trust her so Pat well what else do we have here from our audience yeah, it's just very, very interesting. I'm really enjoying this. And Vanessa, we had a couple other questions that came in. Sure. Two okay. of them that I'll mention right now. First of all, what do you credit your styling power to in the industry? And this is a question. We have several bowlers on the on this Zoom meeting today. So this is a question who didn't it didn't come from one of our bowlers, but I'm sure they'd be interested. Would you do a kingpin too? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite a, lo a long time since the first one, so it would be a little strange. But I actually do, I, I mean, I actually talked to Peter Farrell about that a few years ago, and they were trying to do a King King too, but, but I, I don't think it, it, it was just too hard to orchestrate. And I think Bill, Bill Murray, uh, you know, is maybe not that into there. I'm not really sure exactly what happened, but um, I, I'm not sure that it's going to happen. But there was definitely talk about it at, at one point. So I wish it would be so fun and so great. Yeah. Yeah, I wish. And, uh, thank you for that. I'm sure we'd all be first in line to see that. <laughs> the theater's finally open. And that our uh, the yeah. other question was, what do you credit your styling power to in the industry? My my what power? Styling, styling power. Styling. Mm -hmm. You you mean like the, the way I look? No, just, that, just I guess what 
what keeps you going and what oh, it oh, sounds oh. like you mentioned about Sorry. yoga so I don't mean, like styling because I, I come from the modeling background where styling is like about like what you wear and how you do your hair and makeup oh, um I think I, you, you have to love it my I mean you you have to love acting it, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it was my bad because someone, there was a typo. Someone said staying power, not styling power. Staying power, <laughs> okay, styling power. I'm like, okay, yeah, like, I have a really good hairdresser. No. Although um, you are stylish, so I guess stylish and staying yeah. power together. <laughs> <laughs> um, staying power, well, I think that, you know, you have to, you have to love it because you, there's, it, it is a roller coaster and, and, it, and, it, and it, you know, in all honesty, it is not easy to get older as a woman in this business. You know, once you hit 50, the roles are, you know, are less and there's a lot more competition to get them. So if you, if you don't love it, I think that you would get, uh, you would get to a point where you, you're, you're just, you just had enough. Um, but, you know, I just, I, I just, I love, you know, but I love being on a set. I love from, from action to cut is, is, is just a magical time for me it's it just I love the process of acting I love the people in the industry I love writers and directors and actors and I love the community and it's it's brought me so much and I, I can't really imagine doing anything else I mean I, I don't want to do anything else and uh, you know I th I'm right now I'm sort of transitioning into uh, transitioning into doing different types of roles obviously because I'm not going to play the you know, the, the 30 something year old sexy woman anymore. Uh, and so that's been interesting, actually. It, it, it's, I, mean, I, I, w I want to do a, a wider variety of roles. So it's, it's interesting to see what comes down the pike. And, and sometimes there's a perception issue. It's hard to get people to see you outside of what they think of you as. And most people think of me as Kingpin and Weird Science, which obviously was a while ago now. So it's, uh, it's, you know, it's been a little bit challenging trying to get people to see me as the, you know, as the, the lawyer, as the, as the, you know, middle-aged woman that's, 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 not, that's not in the vein of, of, you know, Lisa or Claudia. So, but it's, you know, it's, it's been working and I've actually done quite a few interesting projects in the last few years. So I think, but, you know, in terms of staying power, you just have to, to love it and you just have to keep going. And you just have to hope that uh, that you can, you know, find or create opportunities. And yeah, that's kind of it, really. Just stay, just staying power is just staying at it, really. That's great. Thank you so much for that response, Vanessa. And that actually, that actually took care of another another question I was going to ask down the road too. So, um, so we got some great minds thinking alike here. Everyone, don't forget this is a, as much fun as this is. We're also here to raise money for both Ride for Roswell and Life Rolls On. So. Please, uh, please be generous, whether it's now or right after the meeting. Um, but Vanessa, let's continue on just with a couple quick more questions and we're almost set here. Um, but uh, this is kind of a, a selfish question that, that I asked. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're, we're, I just mentioned the Joshua Tree and of course, people think Joshua Tree, they think you too. And of course, for yeah. those of you yes. music lovers and, and those of you who perhaps um, aren't following yeah. Vanessa yet, but will, um, one thing which drew me in even more um, once I discovered that you had Instagram, then I was like, okay, she's even cooler than I imagined. Is you play a lot of YouTube and <laughs> Coldplay. Um, for yes, posts. I do. I love that you're a YouTube fan. I love, yeah. I love, I love. And, and um, you know, I, mean, I, yeah. know, I know that I'm going to get razzed for, you know, any of my current guy friends who are going to hear me say this, or maybe my, I don't know if I run for office 15 years from now, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to be shy. I love, I love both bands. Uh, just incredible. Yeah, I love Coldplay too. Yeah. Awesome. I imagine you've seen both in concert and was just wondering if you had yeah. to pick between the two of them, uh, wh which one would you choose? Well, I would have to say right now, definitely Coldplay, but, but I was an avid, avid, and I, and I still love you too. And I actually, I, I saw them when I was about 15 years old, I saw them in concert. I think it was the first concert I ever saw in a tiny little venue that, before they were really big. And, uh, and I think I've seen them in concert about 10 times. Um, so I was just, in, in the 80s, I was, I was all, I mean, Bono was like my hero. <laughs> and, and yeah, so, and now obviously, you know, Coldplay came on the scene a little bit later, but I, I'm, I love Coldplay. I mean, I love, I love them. I, I love their, I, I think they just get better and better. And I, and I actually just saw them in concert 
in January, a small concert. I, I saw a big stadium concert, uh, I think in 2018 or maybe 2017 and, at the Rose Bowl. Uh, and then I saw it in a small little venue that they played uh, in the beginning of January. There's actually on my Instagram in, I think it was January 21st or 2nd, there's a little video that I do with Musetta where we go to the concert and you can, you can check that oh, out. Okay. So, yeah, that. yeah. Just that one. So wonderful. Yeah. One other quick question, kind of more on, on the personal level, but um, you know, not everybody readily readily knows this. But um, you know, you are married and you have a daughter, um, India, who plays uh, basketball for uh, for the mm -hmm. Trojans. Um, yes. And you know, very athletically talented. Um, now, I yes. understand. I, I saw the video earlier this year where she had uh, changed her jersey number. Um, in tribute to uh, Gian O'Brien, and I, it yeah. sounds like she was also mentored by Kobe. So um, I, I just thought was, I thought that was fascinating. I mean, obviously the you know rest in peace, but the you know the Bryans were they were really the big story of 2020 before everything yeah. COVID happened. I was just yeah. wondering. I mean, you know, tell us a little bit about kind of you know Kobe's legacy and and kind of you know what he and his family what what they mean what they mean to you and and your daughter. Well. They're, they're the most, I mean, Kobe is one of the most extraordinary people that I have ever had the, the, the pleasure of knowing. He, he met my daughter when she was about nine and she started basketball at about eight years old and she would, she actually was part of a, an old boys team at that age at the, the practice at UCLA. And she actually met Kobe and some other NBA players during that time. And Kobe just took a real shining to her because she was this little girl that was sort of playing on this old boys team and she, you know, he has daughters and he just thought that was the coolest thing. And he, he kind of took her on the, his wing. And so she's known him for 10 years and, um, and he mentored her and he, he's just, and he and his family were just in incredible. And it's, it was absolutely heartbreaking when that accident happened, obviously for everybody and obviously his family the most, but, um yeah so she she was so lucky i mean he 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 sort of guided her he not only like helped her actual game and you know just gave you know gave her lessons and tutorials on it but um he just guided her through the process of you know the college process and i mean he was just incredible just an incredible person yeah well thank you so much for sharing i know it's i know it's not easy and it's still still pretty new and everything but uh you know yeah. i think i think that's really special that that you have that connection that uh you know you and your family can always treasure and, and yeah. cherish so yeah. um if you have a, just a couple uh quick minutes maybe we'll do one or two more quick sure. questions from the audience before we wrap up sure. wonderful yeah. well pat let me um unmute you here and um do we do we have anything else that was rolling to the top here it looked like a couple of things had come in but i i missed it with everything scrolling uh, well, one other question I see is what types of projects do you see yourself working on the future, on for the future, and do you have any other special interests you'd like to share with the audience? Well, um, I guess my special interest would be probably, you know, obviously yoga and uh, fitness. And um, I'm actually getting into editing. Uh, my, my friend Musetta, who, who we do these little, who, who he's actually a very good editor herself. We do these little uh, Mew and Visa and adventures. And so I've gotten into editing, editing and I want to get better at that. I, I, I do post the odd little nature, nature video that I edit um, uh, on my Instagram so people can check that out. But, but obviously I have a long way to go. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very into that right now. And um, in terms of projects, I, I just did a movie called 39 Weeks, or just, just before the pandemic, 39 Weeks, where um, I play something quite different than, than usual. And, uh, and I played, and then I did a, a, a show called Sons of Thunder, actually on, on Pure Flix. And I played something quite different too. It, it's, it's a faith-based network, actually. And I played, uh, a very, a very uh, faith, uh, someone who really, you know, is, is, is a Christian and that's, that's not something that is, is, in my, is in my real life. So that was very interesting sort of learning about that and, and, and what that means. And, and so, I mean, anytime you get a chance to play something that's outside of my own belief system or outside of 
uh, what I've played before is always great and always a joy. So I, I would love to, to, to play anything really, you know, I mean, I'm open to anything. I think that's part of the beauty of acting is that you can explore different parts of yourself through playing different characters. So, I mean, I would love to do a, a, a reboot of Weird Science because that would be, and it wouldn't, we would, uh, the original cast would be very much a side part of, of that show. But, you know, I would, I played a, another, uh, I played sort of a bull busting uh, boss in a, another movie called Quitting Mom and Dad, Mom and Dad. Uh, so, you know, it, 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 I'm, I'm open to anything. I mean, I feel like I, I uh, yeah, I feel like I, I love the opportunity to play, to play any role, really. Well, thank you so much, Vanessa. And um, I know we've actually gone more than a half hour, so can't oh, it's tell you it's good. can't it's tell good. you how much uh, we appreciate you being here tonight and sharing what the you know what's happening in your life and over over out on the other side of the country, so to speak. So um, yeah. now I know I I was uh, I was getting ready to to purchase a, a photo as a giveaway, and and you graciously yeah. said, no, 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 I've I've got I've yeah, got yeah, you covered. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we can, absolutely. Yeah, we can take care. We can take care of the um, um, the the logistics after the fact. But let me really quickly here. Sure. Um, we're gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna pull up a random number draw here. Let's look at our participants list. We have. All right, now I pro now I promise all of you, even though you can't see this beyond the scenes, we have a highly scientific. I'm, I'm kidding by the way, but we do have a way that uh, matches all of the names here with a specific number, and then we'll have a draw going. So let me pull up a share screen quick. And, and just I to keep it fair, we have removed the writers from our team. Otherwise, someone might think it was fixed, and we don't want that. <laughs> so uh, just the participants who are not part of our team are eligible for the prize. All right. And thank okay. you for donating that, Vanessa. is very, very Oh, kind. you're so welcome. Yeah, and, and just let me know if somebody wants a kingpin or weird science or Stargate or, or just a regular headshot. I'm, I'm happy to, to give them whatever they prefer. Oh, fantastic. Well, what we have done, Vanessa, is we have removed, obviously, the, the close people who are here on the call as part of our team, limited to just participants. So right now, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, here we go. So you should see the number draw. We got through one through 13. I'm gonna hit the calculate button. And, oh wait, generate one number. Here we go. There we go, calculate. And the lucky number is number one. So wow, sometimes, sometimes it pays to be first. And according to the chart here of what the names are that Pat sent me. Oh, we gotta stop sharing first. There we go. The first name that came up was Donna. Donna, congratulations. Actually, Donna's, Donna's a friend of mine and joined in today. So way to go, Donna. We'll get that over to you and, um, and in, enjoy. I know she's a, she's a fan of yours, so, uh, so it worked out great. Oh, thank you. Um, but that's, that's really it. And I guess before we go, which I know this is maybe put you on the spot for a second, but obviously this is all, uh, you being connected now to us is, is all new. So I was just curious to know if you had any questions about what we're doing or what's happening over here and if not that's okay but i wanted to offer you that opportunity yeah you know i i've never been in buffalo actually but uh but i lived in manhattan for um for, oh, for almost 10 years so i love new york i'm a massive fan of new york but yeah i can't believe in all those years i never got up to buffalo i know that it's very cold in the winter right it's great. it can be um you know i will tell you this um little short story is i went to college in Loyola university in chicago and so just like your oh. thing with the hundred dollars for is your name, you know, real, I got the question all the time of, did I miss the big apple? Uh, Buffalo is about yeah. seven hours or so of a drive away. Yeah. And at the time when I went to college, I had never even been anywhere as close to New York city. So, so if I had a hundred dollars for every time I got that question when I was in college, I, yeah. I was it. um, so yeah, New York's a big state. People, it is. I will forget. say though yeah. that my point of bringing Chicago up, besides that, is the fact that I would take a Buffalo winter any day of the week over a Chicago winter. Really? I think it's more snow, but if you're in yeah. a place like Chicago, the whipping wind and the, the wind. temperatures. Oof. Yeah. That's one thing about Buffalo. Yes, we yeah. get snow, 
but we sure as heck know how to deal with it. You've, you've got to put at least a foot on the ground yeah. for anybody to bat an eye. <laughs> so, but yeah. absolutely, if you, if you and your family are ever up this way, I, I know pretty much anyone on this uh, call would be more than happy to uh, give you the grand tour. And, oh, um, thank you. Thank and, you, you know, so and, much. And another thing is, you know, we are, whenever the Canada border opens again, we're literally across the way from Canada and 20 minutes from Niagara right. Falls. So lots to do, lots to do. Yes, so. yes, yes. I haven't been in Niagara Falls either and I'm a nature lover. So I have yes. to make it there for sure. Yes. Well, there you go. Now you've got a, yet another reason. So wonderful yes. well thank you so much uh vanessa really appreciate it you're so welcome yeah i'm actually gonna let's bring back in pat here um through uh video because pat yep she's here um pat's actually gonna close this out um by um sort of thanking everybody and and also just give us a little preview of what's up next Pat. yes thank you thank you tony and on behalf vanessa of our ride team just Thank you for your generosity, for your willingness to do this and, and to give our support. And everyone is just chiming in on the chat with thank yous to you, even though you may or may not oh, be. Oh, you're so welcome. Out. And thank Mary you. said that Buffalo is an um, archaeologic, architectural. <laughs> architectural, I'll get it, architectural gem for filmmaking. So you certainly can come here. We, In fact, I, I believe if I heard this correctly, they're building a studio for filmmaking. Wow. So we've had some oh, recent movies what? that have been filmed here. So, you know, you're welcome anytime. I'm sure, like Tony said, any of the, the participants would give you a tour. Oh, oh, I love that. Thank you so much. And thank you. And and saying all my best to the people from uh, Buffalo and New York State. Thank you. Thank you. And for our participants today, we invite you, if you had fun tonight, to next week, which is very exciting as well as tonight's was. Next week, we feature a recently retired linebacker from the Buffalo Bills, Lorenzo Alexander, who will be on sharing what life is like after football. He's moved to Arizona, which is also unfortunately a hotbed for COVID right now. So I'm sure he'll be talking a little bit about how he's adapting to the new life there. He wants to come back to Buffalo, but right now it's one of the states that the governor has decided if you come back or you come from one of these states, you have to quarantine. So we get to have them though by Zoom. So please join us next week. And also we have a couple more Zoom meetings in store. We have Salute to Businesses who donated to our bowling event. They're coming on to talk about how they're adjusting to the new, new world that we're living in right now. And that should be very exciting. And then we also will be launching a, an online auction and raffle. And finally, to wrap it up, we also have Bowling Talk. Since our theme is bowling, we'll have some featured bowlers and some celebrities that will come on and answer all your questions about bowling. So Vanessa, if you want to join us to get some tips or lessons, so all of a sudden, <laughs> join the Women's Pro Bowlers Tour, you'll be ready to go. So, Thank you. Thank you. Thank I, you I, all. Thank Have a you. wonderful evening. Hope I'd also be bye. Uh, I'd also be remiss if I didn't add in really quickly that Pat is married to Fran Bax, who is, uh, is a professional bowler, and he actually oh. once held back in the '80s the world record for best set, so best three. Wow. Games. So um, that's which, awesome. I mean, over over time, it's been beaten, but. Um, yeah, what is what's he now up to, Pat? Seventy-one perfect games, seventy. Sixty-nine, I think. I think something 60. like that. Yay! It's crazy. That's, congratulations! That's awesome. That's so, how awesome. more bowling connections? Well, I need from, some uh, tips from him for sure. Yes. So, <laughs> so everybody, thank you again. Thank you to the Queen Pin of Kingpin, Vanessa Angel, for thank you sharing your time thank with you so us. Much. So lovely to have you. We can't thank you enough. Oh, and it's great to, to be here. To Thank everybody you. else here, thanks for joining us. And again, please be generous to both Ride for Roswell and Life Rolls On. Take care, everyone. Great. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.